Wow, what a game. As a neutral Manchester United fan watching the game, it had everything it delivered in terms of entertainment. Got to be top three Premier League games this season. I'm going to break it down, given my opinion. I have to say, Isaac, unbelievable player. If he can stay fit, he is one of the best in the world. Uh, I thought Harvey Barnes was brilliant. I, you always forget how good he is because he's been out for so long, but he was so clutch at Leicester. And I did a video when Newcastle signed Harvey Barnes talking about how good he would be. Anderson, Lewis Hall, bringing that sort of energy there. Anthony Gordon, probably been Newcastle's best and most consistent player this season. There were some great performances, even Pakata, even Kudus, even Bowen. And I I actually did a show on Alice Talks Football, my main Man United channel this morning, a live show, and I said, I have a feeling that this is going to be a really good game, West Ham, Newcastle, because both teams have three or four indiv individually brilliant players, if you know what I mean, and today delivered it was spectacular, and I do apologise if we do get some background noise in this video, my neighbours have been out drilling and stuff all day, it's stopped now, so I've started recording, but it's probably going to start again, knowing my luck, but I do want to break down the team, and I do want to give Newcastle so much praise, because Lascelles comes off and Kraft comes on, and by the way, I think Kraft is dreadful I'm going to be honest as a Manchester United fan don't, I don't watch Newcastle every week but I think Kraft's dreadful I'm surprised he came on ahead of the so that, that's crazy but the sales comes off and he's actually been pretty good for Newcastle this season I think he's had probably a better season than Botman um Liveramento comes off who you know is a really good player um Almiron comes off and Kraft comes off they've got basically four players who end up coming off injured and they are three one down and they win the game four three what a story of mentality that is what a story of brilliance that is and the mentality from the Newcastle players if I was a Newcastle fan I'd be applauding them because with the injuries you have I saw a lot of Newcastle fans tweeting and raging how out how out at 3-1 down and I understand the frustration but I thought Eddie Howes has four players come off injured here look at his lineup coming up against the brilliance of Bowen, Pakata and Kudas I felt sorry for Eddie Howes a Manchester United fan I thought we need to cut him some slack because I think he overachieved at Newcastle this season he's been hit with awful injuries when you actually look at the players he has you know, he can't really do too much better. I know there's the thing of why aren't you giving Lewis Hall more minutes? But yeah, Lewis Hall needs more minutes. If Eddie Howe starts craft over Lewis Hall, I tell you what, he will be getting himself sacked. And this is coming from a United fan, Man United fan, because I realised that Newcastle wins in United. But I have to say, I felt so I did feel sorry for Eddie Howe today with all the injuries, with all the setbacks. But Newcastle's individual brilliance delivered. I want to talk about Isaac before anyone, but then I do want to talk about Harvey Barnes, Anthony Gordon, and of course, Lewis Hall. That was impressive and probably deserves to start next match. But I think we've got to talk about Isaac. Just what, what a player he is. What a player he, Isaac is. I said this before and I'll say it again. If he stays fit, He's done that world-class bracket. And I've said this for a while. He's got 18 goals and one assist in all competitions this season in 24 games. His output is unbelievable. Considering that this is probably Newcastle's worst season in their new era and they've been underperforming massively, the fact that he's contributing that many goals, and not just goals, all-round play, the assist to Harvey Barnes was absolutely incredible. Shows what a good player Isaac is. And as you can see by statistics here, 41 touches, two goals, four shots, two on target, one assist, two key passes, 9.0 sofa score rating, you know, 25 out of 20 inaccurate passes but you know he helps in build up he helps in general play he can dribble with the ball he can pass the ball he can play the ball he's such a complete striker that can do it all that pass into Harvey Barnes was top quality-esque and he is one of the best strikers in the world if you can stay fit and I think defensively Newcastle were a mess today I think in midfield they maybe missed Joel Linton his physical presence against West Ham I think Nick Pope was massively missed because let's be honest the graphics rubbish um and I thought Isaac, you know, really helped Newcastle win the game. I thought the energy of the young players and Anderson and Hall, and then I felt, because they've probably not been fatigued as much this season because they've not really played much, and I think anyhow probably should give them more minutes. But I thought the, obviously, experience and individual brilliance of Harvey Barnes, Isaac, Anthony Gordon then got Newcastle over the line. And what was a chaotic game, but that brilliance. And he's been fantastic. He was fantastic. It wasn't just because he scored two penalties. It wasn't just the assist. His build-up, his all-round play, the way he facilitates the wingers, Harvey Barnes, Anthony Gordon. Isaac is a very, very good striker because he can drop into that lower block. He can drop and receive the ball. West Ham, you know, play a very low block, mid-low zonal block. And then you've got Isaac that can drop deep, receive the ball, turn and do those defence splitting passes. He can dribble and pass the ball forward. He can break the final line of defence. So when you're playing against a team that is playing an incredibly deep low block, like West Ham and you've got a striker that can drop deep receive the ball and play those defence splitting passes progress play beat the final line of defence whether he can dribble and run at players which we know he can do and play those passes 
that is what you want in a striker because not only someone that can score goals, not only someone that's got good output, not only someone that's clinical, but Isa gives you a mix of that. And, and that's why I personally rate him so highly because I think that is the striker. And I've got another statistic here to share on the screen before I get into Harvey Barnes and Anthony Gordon. But only Ollie Watkins has scored more goals this season for a non-top six side since August 2022. And when you think about how much isaac has been out injured, he could be top. He could be top at that. Um, when you actually think of how, how long he's been out injured, which is absolutely crazy. And I'm surprised Gordon won man of the match over him. Maybe English bias. I don't know what it was. I thought Gordon was very good as well. And I, I think I understand why he got a second yellow, but I think it's a bit petty when refs do that. Um, but I want to talk about Harvey Barnes. I don't know if you can see that there. Maybe zoom out one. Uh, but wow. It's Harvey Barnes, Darwin Nunes and Scott McTominay, the only three players this season to come off the bench when their team is trailing, score the equaliser, score the winner and Bosh, what an influence Harvey Barnes had today. Two shots, two goals, four shots, 100% shot. I could see 100% successful dribbles, 100% jewels won. He came and he was like, I've been injured too long this season. I'm going to show you what I'm made of. And he was absolutely class. And I've always been a big fan of Harvey Barnes. And there was a little bit of negativity when Newcastle signed him. And I don't know if, if you guys have been following me for a while, but I did a video when Newcastle signed Harvey Barnes to talk about the guy. And I said that he's a really good player. He's really clutch. I think he got 13 goals for a relegated Leicester side last season. And Harvey Barnes reminds me of Jota for Liverpool. Someone that you can't always rely on because he's had a bit of injury problems. But 1v1, you think he's going to finish. You know, you get players. Alan St. Maximan, brilliant dribbler. End product, awful. Let's be honest. He was a great player for St. Maximan when he was good. And he was a great dribbler. But his end product weren't there. And you cost at the point where you need someone when the end product is there. If you want to win titles, you need that clutch player where the end product's there. And I'm not saying that you cost are going to win titles for a couple of years. But he's the kind of player that you want in your squad. Maybe if you want to like become Premier League title challengers, he's the perfect sub to have. But for when you cross right now, he's the perfect player to have in general. But you can know that if you put him through one on one, he, he hits the target. He finishes. He's one. Of, he's got one of the best finishing abilities. He reminds me of Diogo Shota. You put him one on one, you know he's going to finish. You know he's efficient. He's probably one of the most efficient footballers out there. He's always had a good goal scoring record. And I think, you know, a lot of there was a lot of Newcastle fans that I knew that were upset that Maximan had gone and they brought in Harvey Barnes. But I said, yeah, Maximan can dribble and look pretty. But if Newcastle want to win games, Harvey Barnes wins your games. And he did that for Leicester. But Leicester went down, but he's relentlessly efficient. He comes on, he scores, he gets the ball, he dribbles. He's the kind of winger that I would want on my side, Harvey Barnes, at, at, at Man United. You know, someone that can come on, that can run at people, that can dribble at people, that can make something up and that can score. And he got rinsed a bit early in the season. He got mocked a bit early in the season, but I felt the guy's been injured. It's unfair. It's unfair to go in on him. And I think today he's announced himself to Newcastle. He said, look, Newcastle fans, I've not been here for a lot of this season. I've been injured, but this is what I can do. This is how important I can be. And I can come on and I can win you a game. And I think that's what Harvey Barnes showed today. What a top, top player. But the last two players I want to talk about are Anthony Gordon and, of course, Lewis Hall. I'm going to look back at my notes here, but this is what I wrote about Anthony Gordon. The difference maker, two penalties, one today, assist today. Uh, his work in creating, um, you know, Barnes' amazing goal. I mean, Harvey Barnes, 1v1 scores, absolute world he scores. His work rate in creating those goals was absolutely unbelievable, all round unbelievable. And I think, you know, with Anthony Gordon, sorry, Anthony Gordon's work rate in creating, in creating the goals was unbelievable. Barnes's finishing was unbelievable. Which brings me into Anthony Gordon, probably one of the hardest working players in the Premier League, one of the best work rates. And I think, you know, his first six months at Newcastle was a little bit iffy. Uh, but this season, he's explodes. And when Barnes was signed, it was almost like, could this be maybe Anthony Gordon pushed on the bench? Uh, but that maybe gave him, I don't know, the competition or something. Um, you know, he was in a difficult position where was was Anthony Gordon going to keep his place because Barnes had come in and brought and been signed. And then Anthony Gordon's just gone up a level this season. Well, I think to be in general, you could say the best left winger in the Premier League this season because Rashford hasn't performed to his best. Martinelli hasn't performed to his best. Son, who's had a good season, has mostly played central. When you think of left wing position, has anyone had a better season? Maybe Leon Bailey, who's played across the front three for Aston Villa. I think that he's been brilliant, Anthony Gordon, this season. And, he, and he's really shown not just with the two penalties won, not just with his relentlessness, but again, just his work rate, his everything. And what I think about Anthony Gordon is I like that he, when he gets the ball, he wants to make something happen. He wants to drive, he wants to make something happen. He doesn't pass it back. He doesn't sideways pass. He's there, he gets the ball. And when he gets the ball, it's like his primary aim is to move the ball closer to the goal. It's like, I've got the ball, I'm going towards the goal. I've got the ball, I'm going towards the goal. 
And he runs and runs and runs. And I think to do intense sprints for 90 minutes, you know, it'll be the 70th minute and he'll be making an intense sprint and he'll be dribbling and he'll be running and he'll be relentlessly tiring out fullbacks. It's such a trait to have, such a trait to have. But lastly, I do want to talk about, of course, the injuries, the setbacks and Lewis Hall. I think for Newcastle to have that many players out, B3-1 down against a good West Ham side, break down their low block and win is, is a massive result for them in what has been an underwhelming season. But sometimes you have to feel a little bit sorry for Eddie Howe with the injuries he's had mentally, physically. New, it's been half the new class. I think Joel Enton and Nick Pope being there meant tactically what Eddie Howe's trying to do, he can't do. And I think a lot of key players missing means that Eddie Howe can't quite set up tactically. So he's relying on that work rate and those muscles on those legs, but then those muscles and legs are going in the Newcastle players and it's sort of falling apart. And I thought Anderson and, of course, Lewis Hall brought on that that energy. Every time I say Lewis Hall, I keep on saying Lewis Smiley, but L Lewis Hall, I thought was great. And I think he's got a start versus Everton for Newcastle. I think the 30 minutes he played, Kudus was quiet. Kudus was ripping, ripping a Newcastle apart. Defensively, Newcastle were rubbish today. And Kudus was ripping them apart. Honestly, him, Bowen, Pakatar, I was unbelieved. Unbelieved? Unbelie I just couldn't believe how good West Ham were and, you know, how poor Newcastle were defensively. And then Lewis Hall comes on. And I thought that Kudus didn't really get sniffed when he came on. I thought the energy he brought was good. I thought his work rate was good. But the hunger Lewis Hall showed, it was almost like Eddie Howe. You put craft on over me. I understand maybe, you know, you're quite not trusting me. But craft. He's like he took that person and he thought, I'm going to show you what I can do. I'm going to show you what I can do. And I think he's been better than Dan Byrne in a lot of games as well. I think Dan Byrne's had good games. He's had bad games. But Dan Byrne naturally isn't a left back. I think if Lewis Hall is there at your disposal, play Dan Byrne centre back, put Lewis Hall left back. Because if Lascelles is injured now, do you want, like, for me, yeah, I think it's crazy. Anyway, let me know your thoughts, Newcastle fans, down below. That's just my thoughts as a United fan that watches most of the games, but not all. Subscribe if you're new. Bye.